1957 research institute at Kirov plant assess armor-piercing resistance of all domestic tanks, both in serial production and prototypes. The assessment of the protection of tanks was carried out on the basis of shelling with a domestic 85mm projectile. 85mm was choose because in terms of penetration it surpassed 90mm shells of the West. The main scope of research was if the thickness of the armor is increased, it ensures the penetration resistance, but the mass of the tank went beyond values which were unacceptable. The specialists saw the solution to the problem of reducing the mass of armor in the use of fiberglass and light alloys, based on aluminum and titanium as part of the armor, as well as their combination with steel armor. It was also observed that the penetrating effect of the shaped charge jet is relatively weak in soils, especially sands. Therefore it was proposed to replace the steel armor with a layer of sand sandwiched between two thin sheets of steel. In 1959, T-55 tanks hull and turret were designed with two-layer armor protection that is steel with aluminum alloy. However, in the process of testing it turned out that the two-layer armor did not have sufficient survivability, with repeated hits from armor-piercing sub-caliber shells, the mutual support of the layers was lost. Therefore, further tests were carried out on two combinations of three-layer armor, one was steel aluminum and steel. The second was titanium aluminum and titanium. By these combinations, the weight decreases slightly but still remains significant. T-64 became the first serial tank in the world, with a fundamentally new type of protection, adequate to new means of destruction. Before the appearance of the Object 432 tank, all armored vehicles had monolithic armor. The serial-produced tanks have a cast turret consisting of a steel armor base, with an aluminum jacket poured after casting, and outer steel aluminum armor. The total thickness of the turret is 500 mm and provides protection of 460 mm against heat rounds. The turret offers one ton of weight saving over an all-steel turret of equal durability. Later appearance of flaws on those turrets led to the development of turrets with steel inserts and finally, turret with ultraphoric inserts was used on serial models, providing the same durability with a smaller size. On T-64B tanks, steels made by electro-slag remelting were used, which are 10 to 15% more in equivalent thickness than steels of increased hardness. The frontal hull armor of T-72 is similar to that of the T-64, even the first series of the tanks used turrets directly converted from the T-64 turrets. Afterward monolithic turrets made of cast armor steel were used. Monolithic turrets provide satisfactory resistance against 105mm armor-piercing APCR shells, but their heat resistance against shells of the same calibers was inferior to turrets with a combined filler. Monolithic structure was adopted at the start to save cost, allowing T-72 tanks to be produced in large numbers. On T-72A tank the armor of the frontal hull was reinforced. This was achieved by redistributing the thickness of the steel armor plates in order to increase the thickness of the rear plate. Thus, new thicknesses were 60mm steel, 105mm STB, and back sheet 50mm thick. STB acronym stands for Armored Glass Textilite. The turret armor underwent major changes. In serial production, rods made of non-metallic molding materials were used as a filler, fastened before pouring with metal reinforcement, these are called sand rods or quartz armor. It may be difficult to appreciate the fact that it is actually a ceramic block, and that the armor of the T-72A turret is a simple three-layer ceramic sandwich. It is important to note that quartz armor is different from siliceous core armor developed by the US in 50s. T-72B armor is non-energetic reactive armor, which represents a significant advancement in Soviet armor protection. In the front part of the turret, there are two cavities located at an angle of 55 degrees to the axis of the main gun. The cavities are filled with 19 or 20 special armor plate arrays, each plate is 30 mm thick with a composition including 21 mm heavy armor plate, 6 mm rubber layer, and 3 mm thin metal plate. The distance between plates is 22 mm, the basic mechanism of this armor is that plates within the cavities have enough space to bulge and deflect while encountering heat jets. The armor of T-80U implements the method of so-called semi-active protection systems, in which the energy of the weapon itself is used for protection. 
The main armor consists of cellular cast blocks, having polymer filled with steel inserts. On the outer surface of the turret's forehead, one-piece V-shaped contact 5 explosive reactive armor blocks are installed. Earlier variants are equipped with contact 1 ERA modules. When heat jet enters and reaches the rear surface of the armor, the elements of the armor under the action of the shock wave begin to move in the direction of the jet movement, further dissipating the energy of molten mass, in this way the energy of jet will be spent on the destruction of the jet itself. New variants of T-80U have welded turret base with cast turret with cellular cast blocks filled with polymer. Protection on T-90 tank is further enhanced with use of rolled armor and improved welding technique. Welded joints of the T-90 turret are made with overlapping. The base of the T-90 turret is made of steel armor of medium hardness, which significantly increases the armor piercing resistance by 10 to 15 percent than turret with cast armor. Main advantage of rolled turret over a conventional cast turret is its high accuracy during manufacturing. Cast turrets required laborious and non-mechanized works to eliminate casting defects. Armor placed inside these cavities is of modular type which can be upgraded in the future. On the frontal face, V-shaped ERA modules are installed for further protection. Latest T90M and T90MS have improved armor protection over T90A. And ERA coverage is also improved. Both uses Relic built-in explosive reactive armor in place of the previous Contact 5. The new dynamic protection element utilizes a completely new composition of explosives that works effectively against modern and future generation shaped charge munitions, including tandem munitions, as well as APFSDS rounds. Unlike the serially produced Contact 5 system, Relict works equally reliably against both low and high velocity shells. The protection system is provided with Aramid fabric inner splinter proof liners to protect the crew and equipment from the secondary flux of tank fragments. The rear part of the hull and the turret are equipped with wire cage armor to increase the protection of power pack and ammunition compartment against anti-tank grenades and rockets. On T-14 Armada, new design approach is adopted rather than conventional. There is an internal armored capsule for crew protection and an unmanned turret. Both the chassis and the turret are equipped with the Malachit dual explosive reactive armor system on the front, sides, and top. Another major development is the Afghanid active protection system, which includes a millimeter wave radar to detect, track, and intercept incoming anti-tank munitions, both kinetic energy penetrators and tandem charges. Russian armor has improved continuously with the advancement of anti-tank shell. From T-55 to T-80 tank and from T-90 to T-14 armada, there is a huge difference in the protection values, although penetration value of AP and heat round also improved, still their research and new metal in their alloys to have these armor values with little increase in weight is subjectively appreciable.